when the videos be seen, we need to be able to look at your face. Give it to a smell test. See our back straps right there. We'll be working. Then will be the easy part. So we're going to try to get to this hard part and get it over with first. Those will be the easy part. Well, guys, welcome back. We are in the process now of trying to put this hog meat up. Y'all saw where we, where Jared had shot this pig and where we had dressed it out, we put it in the ice chest. When I took it out of the ice chest, I, hey, I've been watching it, draining it. I gave it to a smell test. Everything's good. Most important thing during that time is keeping it drained off and making sure you got plenty of ice on it. And it is ice cold. So what I'm about to do is start trying to clean this up. Um, I'm gonna separate the muscles out. You can see here where I've already started doing that, right here where I'm just cutting it and um, separating each individual muscle out. On this other side, I'll trim all this fat off of it on this other side. So that's the process we got going right now. We like a lot of ground meat, so a lot of this may end up getting ground here. So we'll just stay with us. I'll try to talk you through some of it as we're doing it. But for right now, all I'm doing is going to separate the individual muscles and get the fat off of it. You know, guys, what I'm not is a butcher. I can't tell you exactly how to cut something up. I cut it up for how we use it, I guess, about as much as anything. What I would encourage you to do, there are, hey, a lot of instructional videos out there on uh, processing, hey, deer meat and hog meat and stuff. Um, my biggest thing is to challenge you to, hey, wanna do it yourself and take the time and get the satisfaction of knowing that you've shot it. You know exactly how your meat's been handled and how it's been put up. And there's enough instructional videos out there to hey, teach you um, what you're doing. I, I want to demonstrate to you that this is not a hard process and a lot of what I do has been just self-taught. It's nothing that, uh, hey, I didn't go to school for none of it. And, I've, hey, I've taken the time to watch some videos myself and just not being too scared to do it. What I can tell you is the fact that equipment is everything. And you'll see that with the vacuum sealer that we have here. We've gone to the, hey, from the Sam's Club vacuum sealer now to buying uh, an actual really good quality vacuum sealer. And we'll show y'all that. Y'all have seen that in some of our videos already. I first started out with, I think, Debbie's grandmother's grinder that I couldn't even begin to tell you how old it was when we first started out and how time consuming it was. And then as the years went by and, hey, could actually afford to go buy a grinder, did a little research and, hey, went and bought what I would consider a quality meat grinder now. One that's, hey, got metal gears in it. But the one thing I would encourage you to do is be sure to make sure it's it doesn't have plastic gears and here you can just see we're just trying to clean up the outside of this as best we can we got us a bowl here we're throwing that in and i'm just going to lay this off to the side that's meat that's a probably ground right there As you can see right here, how we're getting this cleaned up and everything. I want you to also look, guys, this is what we call our, our scrap pan. And we are, hey, cleaning it up. And there, in the end, your yield is maybe not what you think it should be. 
but the meat that you have is um, quality meat. You kind of see, you look at this piece of meat right here. You see how the grain of the meat's running this way? We get ready to cut this. If we were going to make steaks out of it, we'd cut it across the grain. I'll kind of demonstrate that to you here so you can kind of see that here. But we would cut it just like this right here and cut it across that grain, then run it through our meat tenderizer. You know. And then right here, you see how I'm cutting it. And then we'll take this piece of meat and run it through our meat tenderizer, and that's a piece of cube steak at that point. Um, I'm not sure how much cube steak we're going to make. And you can look at this piece and see how the grain runs this way. So when you got ready to cut it, you'd cut it across the grain like this. And now you got a piece, little piece of steak meat. Guys, I think we're going to save some of this. I'm not sure where we're going to choose it from just yet, if it's going to be out of the the actual back strap or if we're going to use some steak meat out of these hams but we are going to do chicken fry probably tomorrow night and show you how we would um we're going to probably run it through the tenderizer tonight and then tomorrow i'll show you how I chicken fry it in a hey based in my fish fryer got our meat cleaned up right here and we are hey i'll be honest with you when we're cutting this up we are probably heavy on the cutoff side meaning that what we end up with is really cleaned up really good there appears to be a lot of waste, but what you do end up with is some really good quality meat right here. Like I said, we'll try to probably make some steaks out of some of this, but the way we eat ground meat, a lot of this will end up being ground up and everything. And you can look at some of this and kind of see the grain, and I was already pointing that out, the grain, how it runs in the meat. And if you were cutting it in steak, you'd want to cut it across that grain. But anyway, guys, there's what we have right there. Now we're going to go out and get the front shoulders Get those cleaned up. So guys, as you can kind of tell here, I've got the shoulder kind of cleaned up. And what I'm about to do is start going down these seams right here and cutting these muscles out of this. And you can see how I'm just going in here and just whittling this out. And what this will end up being is meat that we're just going to straight run through the grinder. You see that tendon right there, and we'll work on trying to get rid of that tendon in a minute. You see how I'm running my knife down. See, how there's that tendon on the, basically I'd say the top side to it. And we're just going to fillet this off and try to get rid of that. And I'll turn it over. That'll give me a little piece to hold on to. And then I'll just run my knife down it. And, hey, Peel that back off like that. And a lot of this connective tissue, guys, would grind, go through your grinder. Hey, we just take the time to clean all that out of it. That's something that we don't want in our meat, so we take the time to clean that out of it, and which accounts for why we have the waste that we do have. But like I said, the meat that we will end up with, we want to be very edible and not, hey, no gristles or nothing like that in it. So. so I've got this bone right here on the side of it. I'm just gonna take my knife in here and just be careful of your fingers. Like I said guys, these shoulders can be cooked whole if you wanted to. I've just found for our family that it just seems to work out better if we go ahead and just process them and grind them up. And hey, all I'm trying to do right now is figure out how to get this off the bone itself. As you can tell, that's how that's going to open up right there. Then I want to have the meat off of this bone, I'll go in and um, separate it out better. One thing to be aware of, this down here on the shank, hey, it's just got a lot of tendons in it. And you may not want to fool with that, and you might. And some people take this shank piece right here and just cook it down, and um, then tear it off the bone or whatever. You can see we finally made it to leg bone right there. And Pretty much all the meat off of that shoulder now. 
we just got a bone there. And this is why you see that it looked like there was some meat there, but see all this uh, that silver tendon and all that? You ain't gonna wanna fool with that. I don't grind that up into our meat. I got a scale out here just to kind of give you an idea. This is our shoulders. This is what we've ended up with after we've cleaned them up really good. And I'm just wanting to give you all an idea about how much just raw meat we end up with here. So we basically got about five and a half pounds of meat off those shoulders that we'll grind up now. Just wanted y'all to give an idea about how much meat's actually here. And hey guys, it is a lot of work, but there's a lot of satisfaction in knowing that the meat we're eating, we got a dog in the background. Um, the meat we're eating, hey, hey, it didn't come from the grocery store. We've, hey, went behind the house here and shot it off, the, shot this pig off the river, and we're taking the time to process it. We're not really concerned about the amount of time that we're spending. It's the fact of the quality of meat that we're ending up with when we're done. So guys, here's the back straps out of those pigs, and that's about, they're about two feet long here, laying out. I've got them, here's the skin side out, and I'm gonna flip them over, you kind of see them. And we cut them, I cut them all the way out of the hip, all the way down into the shoulder area, and that's what this is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip these over, get these cleaned up, and process these, get these ready to eat. Just like, guys, just get an idea, look how much fat. I mean, that's almost an inch thick right there on top of that loin. So guys, this is our back straps that we've gotten cleaned up now from what you saw a while ago. We've got them cleaned up. This is the end pieces off of those. I kind of kept those in the same pile, but we're just gonna weigh that so you just get an idea of what we ended up with here. But the two back straps, you're looking at right at three pounds on those and all. And then the cutoff pieces that was cut off of them, now we're about four and a half pounds. That's what we've got. So all these cutoff pieces here, this is, big, this is going to end up in the grind pile. We'll grind it up, make hamburger meat out of that. So there's two ways that I've cooked these. I've, co I've, no, I've cooked them whole before, where you just marinate them up, and wrap, you can wrap them in bacon if you wanted to, to keep some moisture in them so they don't dry out too bad, but cook them whole and almost cook them, hey, I'm, I'm the guy that's gonna be air on the rarer side than the well done side on these. Or we cut them into steaks and make chicken fry out of them. And that's what I'm gonna show you what we do here with those. And when I cut these, um, I'm probably a little, about a half inch thick right there with them. Idea what those are going to look like. And I've cooked these whole just like this too, like you would a pork chop. I just grill them. Well, guys, we've got our meat to the point we're fixing to grind up for our hamburger meat. Uh, this is one of the things I was talking about. You know, you always hear the somebody say tools are everything. Well, this is the grinder that I upgraded to after dealing with plastic gears. And this grinder here is a half horsepower grinder, and I purchased this at Cabela's when I purchased it. I actually went down there to buy the three quarter and ran into a gentleman there at uh, when I was looking at grinders, and me and my wife were talking about which one to buy, and the gentleman standing there says, hey, we process pigs all the time at our um, hunting camp, and he said, I'm telling you, the half horsepower grinder is more than enough grinder for what you probably would ever do. The only thing I'll tell you is buy what you can afford. And if you can afford at least this half horsepower, because I haven't used anything smaller, I would buy the half or bigger. Um, I haven't used a bigger one than this, but I'm just telling you, this right here machine is fixing to go through this hamburger meat. And I wish I could tell you how much it is. We'll try to weigh it at the end and give you an idea of just how much it weighed. But we'll go through this meat in about two or three minutes here pretty quick. Um, guys, one of the things I didn't mention about this Tonight, I'm not going to need it, but if you were to, when you get ready to do your sausages and stuff like that, your stuffer, the best thing you can have is the foot pedal to this machine. Um, tonight, we just got this pile of meat. We're going to turn it on and grind it. But if you were stuffing meat, stuffing, making your summer sausages or your snack stick and all, the thing to have is the foot pedal. Um, I own the foot pedal, but I didn't think we needed it tonight, so we're just going to grind it tonight.
Guys, and I think that probably took less than five minutes to do that. I didn't time it, but it didn't take long. That's for sure. There are six pounds right there. 12 pounds. There's another six. So we end up with about 18 pounds of ground meat up here. Well, guys, I reached in the refrigerator, grabbed the bagged up steak meat, and we had right at six pounds of steak meat there. 18 pounds of ground up meat, another six pounds. So we've got about 24 pounds of finished meat here. Then the rib meat I pulled off was about three pounds. So we're ballparking about 27 pounds of meat off of this 200 pound pig hole. You look at it and go, that ain't much yield out of it, but it's quality meat. And that's what you got to understand. The amount of hamburger meat surprised me because I didn't think we had quite that much. But anyway, end up with a good amount of hamburger meat which we can use in spaghettis and soups. Hey, and guys, I'm gonna tomorrow probably cook a couple hamburger patties for y'all on the grill also. Here we got our tenderizer. At one time I tenderized stuff by hand when we were getting ready to cook it, but now we go ahead and tenderize it before we freeze it. So when it comes out of the freezer, it's ready to be eaten. All we have to do is season it and cook it. And the kids got this for me a couple Christmases ago, and this is a Weston tenderizer. And I believe it was probably, I don't know if it was purchased from Cabela's or not, but that wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't. And what I like to do here is I try to run them through twice. I'll run them through lengthwise, and then I'll try to run them through sideways through it. And now you have your cube steak. So guys, I've run our back strip through our tenderizer here. Looks like that might have failed wrong. So I'm gonna run it through one more time there. I like for it to have that good crisscross pattern in it. It's ready to be put in the freezer. We have at times taken this meat and also seasoned it before we froze it. But tonight we're just gonna try to get it in the freezer. One of our pound of hamburger meat that we've ground, it's ground pork, we've got it ground up now. And it's been through the vacuum sealer We've got our hamburger meat laid out here in balls, in one pound balls right now. We're fixing to get those packaged up, run those through our vacuum sealer. It's getting late tonight, so we're gonna try to get this wrapped up. If y'all watch many of our videos, you know that Miss Debbie's normally our vacuum sealer, and let's just say that when the sun went down, Miss Debbie turned into a pumpkin tonight. guys vacuum sealed down nice and tight and that just makes it last that much longer in the freezer for us and i'll mash that out nice and flat just a little bit here stay tuned um, like tomorrow afternoon i'm going to try to show you how we chicken fry some of this up well guys as always we appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe and we'll see y'all next time <music>